Now we take what we know about implicit differentiation to look at the derivatives of logarithmic functions. Derivatives of logarithmic functions. And the process here is similar to the derivatives of inverse trig functions. We're going to begin with the inverse of a logarithmic function and then we'll work towards implicit differentiation to get the derivative of the log function. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is let, let y equal a generic log function. So let's say we have log base a of x, okay? And of course, a here we'll assume is a positive number. We only, we only consider logs with positive bases. Now, uh, the good news for us is that the inverse of a log function is an exponential function. So, for example, if I apply a base of a to both sides, the left side looks like a to the y power, and the right side looks like a to the log power. Writing that out looks like this. So I'm undoing the log on the right side, and now I have an equivalent equation that says a to the y equals x. And now the reason this is nice is because now I can differentiate this equation and I know the derivative of both sides. Um, and, and that's going to help us figure out dy dx, which is also the derivative of log base a of x. So we're going we're gonna to differentiate both sides of this equation. And then we're going to solve for dy dx to give us the derivative of the log function. So I'll do the derivative of the left side with respect to x, and I'll do the derivative of the right side with respect to x. And the derivative of a to the y power is, well, it just repeats itself, a to the y but then it's multiplied by this extra factor, the natural log of a, the base a, and because y, the input to this function is y, that's a function of x, we have to consider the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of that y with respect to x also. So a to the y natural log of a is the derivative of the outer function, while y is the inner function, so dy dx is the derivative of the inner function using the chain rule. The right side's much easier. The derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. Now solving for dy dx, because remember, y is the log function, so dy dx is the derivative of the log function. Solving for that gives us, well, I just divide by a to the y times the natural log of a, which looks like this. And of course, the natural log of a is a constant, right? Uh, because a itself is a constant, so the natural log of that value is also a constant. And now the key is, this should all be, since it's dy dx, we'd like it to be in terms of x, but we have a y here. The good news for us is that a to the y, we already have it here, a to the y is in fact just x. So we can, we can say that dy dx equals 1 over a to the y is just x times the natural log of a. All right, so, so the conclusion is that the derivative of y, which is log base a of x, the derivative of log base a of x with respect to x equals 1 over x times the natural log of the base a, okay? So uh, you get this interesting, I, this interesting concept where you started with a log and your constant coefficient in the denominator here is a natural log of, of the base a. Now there are several ways uh, to, to look at this, but we're gonna, we're gonna focus on this idea and let's, let's consider 
So, so that's, that's the big picture for this video is this derivative that you need to know. But most commonly, most commonly you're going to deal with the log with the base of e, the natural log. So uh, for example, if I, if I look at the natural log, if I look at some specific examples, the derivative of the natural log of x, remember this is base e, turns into 1 over x, right, the same argument, x, times the natural log of the base, which in this case is e, well, the natural log of e is just 1. So the derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x. And that's perhaps the most common uh, logarithmic derivative that you'll see. Uh, let's do another derivative. Let's, let's look at maybe log base 3 of x. Well, that's going to be 1 over x times the natural log of 3 in this case. And that's as simple as that gets. Now, I suppose if you wanted, if you wanted to separate the coefficient from 1 over x, you could say that this is 1 over the natural log of 3 times 1 over x if you wanted to separate them. Uh, but this is the most typical way to write it. Let's do more examples where we do log derivatives. And let's look at them using um, the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, all the other different the other different rules we may encounter when differentiating. Now another thing that, that you could explore on your own, I don't want to go into detail here, is you could take up any log, so log base a of x, you could take that and rewrite it using a change of base formula with just natural log. Um, and then you could differentiate that using the known derivative of the natural log function. So I'll just throw those keywords out there. If you want to do a search for yourself, you could explore that. It's, it's interesting to look at and yields the same results, okay? Um, all right, so, so let's do an example. Uh, differentiate. Differentiate. And let's look at, let's look at y equals log base 2 of x squared plus 3x. All right, so let's differentiate y equals log base 2 of x squared plus 3x. Well, dy dx, let's maybe write it that way, dy dx equals the derivative of a log function is 1 over Usually it's x, but here the argument's not x, it's x squared plus 3x. So it's going to be 1 over x squared plus 3x times the natural log of the base 2. Okay? And you got to be careful, that's not it. That's the derivative of the outer function, right? The log base 2 function, it gives you all of this derivative. But you still have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function because of the chain rule. So in this case, the derivative of the inner function is 2x plus 3. The inner function here being the argument x squared plus 3x. And so what ends up happening when you multiply these is on top, you get the 2x plus 3. And on the bottom, you get the x squared plus 3x. In fact, um, it might be more conventional to put the natural log of 2 in the front times the x squared plus 3x. Okay. Uh, like this word, a coefficient being multiplied by the binomial. And so you start to notice a pattern when you differentiate log functions, especially when the, when the chain rule is involved, the derivative of the inner function, 2x plus 3 in this case, ends up being on the numerator of the derivative. Um, and then in the denominator, you get the rest of the result. Okay? So that's, that's a chain rule with a, with a log base 2 function. Let's look at Another example, using a natural log function. Differentiate. And in this case, let's say that we have y equals, um, we'll do a basic natural log function first. y equals the natural log of, how about the cosine of t. We use a different variable as well. 
just to practice with our notation. So if I want to differentiate this, I would say the derivative of y with respect to t, because t is our independent variable now. So dy dt would be, again, this is an application of the chain rule, right? An application of the chain rule. The derivative of the outer function, the natural log function, says, well, recall, if I differentiate the natural log of x with respect to x, I just get 1 over the argument x. So here, the derivative of the outer natural log function just results in a 1 over behavior. So the derivative of the outer function turns into 1 over the argument, in this case, is cosine of t. And then I would multiply by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function is negative sine of t. And I could put it out to the side, but we're catching on maybe that the derivative of a log function yields the derivative of the inner on the numerator. So I get negative sine of t. And so this actually turns out to be, if you simplify the trigonometric function, you get negative tangent of t. So that's, that's kind of an interesting example there. Negative tangent of t is the derivative of this natural log function. Okay, let's do, let's see, let's do another uh, example of a natural log derivative uh, with a product rule. Let's say we want to differentiate, how about g of t equals t squared times the natural log of t. So in this case, when we differentiate g of t, we would typically write g prime of t. And we've got t squared times the natural log of t, so we'll use the product rule. So I'll do the derivative of the first function, which is 2t, multiplied by the second function, which is natural log of t. So the derivative of the first multiplied by the second plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the natural log of t, which is 1 over t. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And if we simplify this a little bit, we have 2t natural log of t plus, and when I multiply t squared by 1 over t, I just get t. All right, so there's another good example of differentiating a log function this time with the, uh, with the product rule involved. All right, so we're going to get really comfortable probably differentiating natural logs because it's always just one over the argument using the chain rule as necessary. What most people tend to forget is the derivative if the, the base is not e. So make sure if your base is not e that when you differentiate, when you differentiate a log base b, let's say, well, the derivative is going to be that 1 over x piece, but you're also going to have that extra factor of the natural log of your base multiplied in the denominator. All right? So be comfortable with both types of log derivatives.